Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends. And today our topic is about Ramadan. Uh, you know, some of you send me a links of uh, videos of a Christian children's singing for Ramadan in a church. Uh, you know, there is many false teachers, sadly, in our churches. And those are worse than the devil himself. Because, I mean, how you teach a child to sing for a religion, teach to kill us as a Christians, as we see in chapter 9, verse number 29. For us, we love Muslims, and we wish them the best, but Islam is an evil religion, and Ramadan is an Islamic. It's not a Muslim. Ramadan is not the Muslims. Ramadan is Islam. And there's a huge difference. So we teach our children to love the Muslims, to be nice to them, to be kind to each other, etc. But on the other side, the Muslims, they teach their children that our children and us should be killed. And this is in the Quran, as we know, in chapter 9, verse number 29. And actually many verses of the Quran saying clearly that we are infidels, we are nudges, we are filthy, uh, we have to be humiliated. Uh, so how somebody, he teach children and he claimed to be a priest. He claimed to be a priest. He teach children to sing for the religion who killed and kill Christians and Jews and Hindus and Buddhas. This is a specific verses in the Quran where Muhammad he made it clear that this is a war have to happen until the judgment day and the Muslim have to be keep killing Christians and Jews and they have to pay in order to live and they have to, if they live they live like slaves so if there is someone he claimed to be a priest in a church it doesn't matter what a church Indonesia whatever place this person is serving the devil and please expose them did you tell the children that the Quran says fight the Christians are we singing to Allah the one who says kill the Christians if the purpose of this is to be kind to Muslims we can be kind to Muslims by being kind to Muslims by being good not by singing to the devil. So those who call themselves prophets, priests, these days, they are the devil himself. The Lord, he says, from their fruits, you shall know them. Somebody saying, Christian Prince, I'm tired. I can't tell you are a doctor, my friend. No, I'm not tired. I think you are the one. So today our topic is about Ramadan. Just two or three days ago, a Muslim scientist who studied history and uh, the ancient Egyptian, he announced in Egypt, and this is a person who is from the family of the president too, so it's not only a Muslim, he announced to the Muslims that you should know that Ramadan was not only for you. Ramadan was for the ancient people of Pharaoh. They celebrate Ramadan, even they celebrate the night of Al-Qadr. You remember we spoke about it, where Muhammad, he speak about, uh, he received the Quran. And remember, the Quran say clearly that the people of the Pharaoh are pagans. And now this scientist who is very well respected between the Muslims, this is not a Christian, this is not a Jew, this is not a Hindu. This is a guy who spent his life studying the Egyptian when he is an Egyptian. When he come with this and he say it, how much that will affect Islam? You know how many times we said to you Ramadan is something been taken from the Sabian? Do you remember? Everything Muhammad he have. 
is stolen from somebody else and we will show you today كل سنة وكل مصر بخير أول يوم في شهر رمضان المبارك أعده الله علينا ولكن كان هناك أيضا نوع من أنواع الصيام معناها من 1 يناير إلى 31 ديسمبر م. العام هو من موعد معين في السنة إلى نفس الموعد في السنة التي تلي تمام. فالأصح لغويا يعني أن احنا نقول كل عام وأنتم بخير ولا نقول كل سنه وانتم طيبين لان كل سنه وانتم بخير او كل سنه وانتم طيبين دي اونلي او فقط في 1 يناير. امم العام من 1 يناير العام Yeah, he's correcting her about you now saying how to say things in the Arabic and how it means in historic way. Let us go where he speak about uh, رمضان. الشعيرة الدينية الخماسية. فكانت في مصر القديمة وما نستغربش طبعا لأن أول رسول هو إدريس عليه السلام كان 5500 قبل الميلاد يعني قبل الديانات السماوية ب 3000 سنة و 500 He's saying the first messenger they heard about he was 5000 years and 500 5500 years and supposedly his name is Idris and Muslims they have a special name for everybody you know Idris uh, but what does have to do with this? So he's saying, going back, he says, this is not it shouldn't be strange for us uh, because there is messengers came thousands of years ago. Okay, but what does have to do with the Egyptian? Egyptian, the Quran say clearly that they are pagans. This is why Allah He sent Aaron and Musa to the Pharaoh. Listen carefully. We'll talk about Idris, Idris, في اخبار الحكماء بتاريخ العلماء في صفحه واحد واثنين بيتكلم على ادريس انه كان نبيا ورسولا ويعتبر اول رسول لانه لم ياتي رسل من قبل حتى ادم كان نبيا فقط ولم يكن رسولا لان ما كانش When the Muslims they speak about someone his name is Idris let us show you Idris who is Idris You will be surprised Enoch. According to Muslims, Idris is Enoch. I don't know how the name Enoch became Idris. Don't ask me, please, because this is Islam, you know. Uh, obviously, they have nothing to do with each other, you know. Uh, the name, they don't fit. And obviously, Muhammad is taking the name from somewhere else. This is not where the name is coming from. It's obvious. Idris, Enoch. All right. So he's talking about our prophet, his name is Enoch, who was thousand of years ago, exist. And according to him, he was 5,500 years ago. I don't know how the numbers will work with this guy, uh, because the Muslim, they have a genealogy for Muhammad, where he go all the way to Adam. And then if, we, if they go more than 5,000 years, they will go before Adam. Let us go to the video. في رسالة وما فيش ناس هيديها لمين فكان العقيدة الخماسية في مصر قديمة نمرة واحد التوحيد ولا... The Egyptian, the old Egyptian they believe in something called الخماسية which is the, uh, uh, the oneness of God توحيد he used exactly the word توحيد so the old Egyptian they believe in توحيد listen carefully the old Egyptian, they believe in Tawheed. Anyway, you know what? I'm going to post the link for the video so you can watch it all for those who speak Arabic. For those who don't speak Arabic, it doesn't make any difference. But let us read what here they're saying about summary about this. He said, as an example, the Egyptian today, they say, Wahawi ya Wahawi. Wahawi ya Wahawi, if, so, if you are not an Egyptian, you won't understand. And even if you're an Egyptian, you have no idea what are you saying. You are just repeating what what you heard from your grand grand grandparents. So wahawiya wahawi mean they are asking the moon to appear. He says, Inna iyaha hiya ismu iyah, hutub. Waltiyankusum ismuha ila iyah, wa manaha al qamar. So iyaha, it is iyah hutub, which is two words, mean the moon. Hutub mean time. And that mean 
the, the, the moon of time. And she was a queen of Egypt, or one of the queens of the pharaohs. She encouraged her husband to find the Hoxos, to fight them. And after that, her son, older son, the pharaoh, Camus. And this is what they did. And then after that, King Ahmos. Then he continues speaking about uh, uh, many things. He said, uh, the history of Ramadan, Ramadan is so okay. And this is a this is a summary of the article. Hold on. So here they are. Okay, it says in says here, and the, uh, uh, and that Ramadan can the most high aid. By the Ramadan, let us see. Hold on. Let us go to the top. He said. Yes, Islam is religion where it uh, where uh, where Ramadan came at that time. But the Pharaina, the Pharaina, the Pharaohs, they used to fast one month for real, and they witness the night of Al Qadr. Al Qadr, they celebrate that too, which Muhammad claimed that this is the night he received the Quran, and then and even they celebrate that uh, holiday as the night of Al Qadr. Uh, anyway, the video is long. And he is saying, even the Quran confirm, taking that from the Egyptian saying, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyam. And he is saying that the word siyam, the Quran, when the Quran says the word siyam, siyam is an Egyptian word. It is not Arabic. Actually, I would use Google Translation to translate the page, you know, better than just me translating. You can use Google Translation. So here he says, chapter 2, verse 183, it says, he quote this verse from the Quran. He says, it is uh, 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 ordered for you to do siyam. Siyam supposedly means fasting in Arabic. He's saying, this is not an Arabic word, this is an Egyptian word. Siyam. Okay? A song. A song. So here, you, you will see here, he says in his uh, study, he says that the word song is coming from before Islam from Egypt he says and it is an Egyptian old ancient Egyptian Tani Saw Saw which mean you forbid yourself from uh, uh, food you know like you stop eating and etc uh, let me post the link for you you can watch the whole video and you can go use Google Translation. There's many articles about it by this guy, but I chose this one because it's short and the video is there anyway. So if you click at Google Translation, uh, we have to open Google Browser. Now, Muslims they did not notice how dangerous what this guy he just said, because uh, he just demolished the religion of Islam. As simple as that. If you remember my time, I told you that the Sabian believed that the Pharaoh was a Sabian. This is why the uh, Sabian, they hate the God of the Jews, Adonai. They call him the devil. They made fun of the Jews' God, who ordered the Jews to practice circumcision. Uh, circumcision. And Muhammad, he took that from the Jews too. So let us go here, translate to English. This is the title. The pharaohs fasted for 30 days and know the night of power. Okay. And here you go down the rest of the article. You know, let's zoom in. All right. And as you see, they witness the, they, they celebrate for Ramadan and they even celebrate the night of Al Qadr. And here he says to you that even the word song uh, is coming, it's an Egyptian word. It is not an Arabic word. And this is where the word coming from. Uh, let's see. And he says here, and this is why the Quran quoting uh, that Allah said that fasting is uh, prescribed for you. All right. And then here he explained the word psalm, where the word psalm is coming from. 
he says uh, uh, that the word Psalm is coming from an Egyptian word. All right. Now, it might be just a light article and light statement from a scientist who study uh, 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 the history of the Egyptian. But then if we go to the Quran, we will have a problem based on what this guy said. If the pharaohs and the people of the pharaohs were celebrating Ramadan, what was their religion? He said even there are people who worship one God. What was the religion? That's mean all the Quran is wrong. All those verses in the Quran speaking about Pharaoh, the unbelievers and his people who don't believe in Allah. All those verses. When chapter 7 uh, says that Allah, he sent Moses to the Pharaoh and he said to him, Oh Pharaoh, I am a messenger of Allah for you to give you a message. And then the Pharaoh don't believe him and they don't believe in Allah. And the Pharaoh obviously is a pagan person. The funny is that the studies shows that the Pharaohs, they teach their people they are God themselves. So how the pharaohs are gods in the same time they are fasting Ramadan. The people of the pharaoh are fasting Ramadan, but fasting for who? For the pharaoh. When the Quran speak about the pharaoh, And the Pharaoh says, you believe in Moses? Before I give you permission, surely this is a magic. So this is a, actually not magic, sorry. This is surely, a, a, surely it's a, a plot, which have applauded for you at a makr, deception. So how the Quran speak about the Pharaoh and the people of the Pharaoh as kuffar and then we just heard this man saying clearly that those people they celebrate Ramadan they celebrate the night of power which Muhammad he took literally and he claimed that he have one too but the Quran says that Allah he punish the pharaohs for not believing he punish his people flood came on Egypt Loctos come in Egypt insect fraud frogs all those things just because the guy refuse and then don't forget that Allah he drawn the army of the Pharaoh which means the Quran describing the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh people are evil but we just heard the guy saying the Pharaoh people they celebrate Ramadan now, if we go and do a little search, what the Muslim used to fast before Ramadan, when Ramadan came, you will find that Ramadan is a joke. Muhammad was looking for fasting, as an example. Before Ramadan, Muhammad used to fast. Different fasting. Different fasting. What is that fasting? The story I will show you is a clear evidence that Muhammad is not a prophet of God. Imagine I go to a city and I claim to be a prophet of God. And then I see a bunch of people fasting and I say to them, what is this? He says, this is the day of Ashura. This is the day of Ashura. He said, what is the day of Ashura? What is the day of Ashura? Which means Muhammad, he do not even know what is that day. 
A Jew, he said. This is the day when Moses, he crossed the sea. When Muhammad, he heard that, he says, well, this is a day for us more than you then. And he start fasting Ashura. Let us find the hadith. So we can laugh together at the Prophet who is taking his fasting not from God. You see, ritual should not come from a Jew walking in the street to a Prophet. Ritual should come from God. If the God of Muhammad said to him, you fast this day, then the God of Muhammad said to him, fast this day. And that explained why he is fasting. But Muhammad, he see a Jew in the street. And he asked him, why you are fasting? He said, this is the day of Ashura. And just because they fast Ashura, he fasted. Read carefully. This is Sahih Bukhari. The Muslim, they cannot say, you know, the drama they have, weak and strong and fat and vitamin D and E is missing. The Prophet came to the Medina. Medina is a city which is called Yathrib, the Jewish city, and when Muhammad later killed them all and took the city as usual. And he saw a, the Jews fasting on the day of Ashura. This is the first time Muhammad, he see a fasting day. Who was fasting according to the story here? The Jews. He asked them about that. And here clear evidence that Muhammad, he do not know what is that. Because if I know, I will not ask you what is this. Right? So he asked the Jews, what is this? They replied, this is a good day. The day which Allah rescued Bani Israel, the children of Israel, from their enemy. So Moses fasted in this day. The prophet said, we have more claim over Moses than you. So the prophet fasted on that day and ordered the Muslim to fast that day. Do you see it? Do we have any Muslim can explain to us how Muhammad he take his ritual from the Jews? What if the Jews are lying? What if this is not a true story? What if this date is not exist? And who is a Muslim can show me Ashura in the Old Testament? Where is this guy there, the Ashura? Do we have any Muslim? So I am a prophet of God. I walk in the street. <clears throat> I see somebody is a Hindu. And he is, uh, he said, uh, you want to eat with me? He said, no, I cannot eat. I'm fasting. I say, hey, Hindu, why you are fasting? He says, this is the day of etc. What is that? So Muhammad was looking for a fasting day, and he don't have one. I will show you another example of Muhammad <clears throat> building a religion. Muhammad is building a religion. He don't have one yet. He claimed to be a prophet, but he have nothing. You know, he don't have rituals yet. Uh, he left the Kaaba. He have no Kaaba no more. Uh, you know, kissing the black stone is not there no more. And later he went back to his root, you know, so he started kissing the black stone again because the Jews did not accept him anyway. In different places we will find, in many places we will find that Muhammad, he was very sensitive to the Jews busting him, saying to him, Anything they say to him, he considered they are saying he is they are saying to him, you copy us. The Messenger of Allah used to stand up for a funeral. Okay. Until the crops was placed in the grave. A learned Jews, a learned Jew here mean a, a rabbi, passed him and said, This is how we do it. The Prophet 
sit down and said sit down sit down act differently here you ask yourself okay Muhammad is a prophet of God he was a praying in a certain way and he used it says here he used to, to pray in a certain way he used you see the word used which means God knows for how long maybe a year maybe two years maybe four years maybe five I don't know just a Jew walked by and he said this is how we do it Muhammad he changed the prayer what the problem with Muhammad then was he praying wrong or Muhammad he is saying to himself they got me busted I'm praying like them I have to change it because if this is a prayer and the prayer of Muslims is coming from Allah then who care if the Jews they say we do it this way or not so what and here you notice something very funny. Don't the Muslims they say we pray like Moses? Don't the Muslims they say we pray like Jesus? Suddenly they don't want to pray like Moses. And how fast to change the way you pray just because a guy he said to you, this is how we do it. And what Muhammad he said? sit down sit down act differently i wish i have a camera at that time that would be hilarious imagine if we can have a video for this it's a funeral and the prophet he prayed for hundreds of times like this and then a jewish rabbi he walked by he said habibi muhammad habibi this is how we do it habibi muhammad he got ticklish, like what the heck, they got me busted. Immediately Muhammad, he come with the statement, sit down, and he sat down too. Like, sit down, fast, fast. You know, you sit down, sit down, you idiot. Sit down, sit down, just act differently, okay? Let us act differently. Well, isn't it Muhammad you receive inspiration from God? How fast the inspiration, man? Where is Jibreel? How Muhammad he come to the conclusion so fast that he should not pray like this anymore? And why you need to act differently? Are you just acting differently for the sake of differently or you are following God? A person who is following God, he will not act differently. Let us say a Muslim, he walk by and he says, this is how we do it, whatever I'm doing. And I am a Christian, let us say, I, I pray, I open my hand to God. I say, okay, I'm not going to do it no more. So why would I do that? That is really silly and stupid. But here you notice that Muhammad, because he have a reputation, that the Jews, they keep saying that he is stealing from them. And obviously it's true. It's true. And this is the fasting of Ashura. As you see in the front of you. And then Muhammad, just to show you how, this, how crazy this guy is. The Jews, they fast Ashura in a certain day. In the day of Ashura which is supposedly the day they fasted for hundreds and hundreds of years. The Muslim, they said to him, because remember, he keeps saying to them, act differently, right? Act differently. But we are fasting Ashura. It's the same. So look what Muhammad said, just to show you that this is the most corrupt, false, stupid man. How easy to expose him. When they said to him, okay, but we are fasting the same day, the, the Jews, they are fasting. But remember, this is the Jew, the Jew fasting, supposedly. Ibn Abbas reported when the Messenger of Allah fasted in the day of Ashura and commanded, and look, it says fasted in the day of, on the day of Ashura, exactly the same day. And command that should be preserved as fast. His companion said to him, not Allah. <laughs> they said, Messenger of Allah. It is the day which the Jews, the Jews and the Christians hold high 
uh, 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 esteem. <laughs> Thereupon the messenger of Allah said, when the next year come, God willing, we would observe the fast on the ninth, not in the eighth, not in the ten. <laughs> Moses across the, 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 the sea, it changed. That's it. Just to be differently, you know. Okay, but isn't it this is the day where the Moses he crossed the sea and you believed in and you you, you fasted yourself? D do you see what I'm talking about? When Muhammad first time he fasted this day, isn't it because they told him that this is the day where Moses fasted? Okay, so as long as this is the day where Moses fasted, and because of that. The Jews they fast and Muhammad accept to fast. Wonderful. You Muhammad, you change the day? Oh, we, we will uh, fast the day uh, before it. Okay? <laughs> That's mean Muhammad is willing to change the day when Moses, he crossed the sea just to act differently. Well, if this is the day where Moses, he fasted, why you need to change it? How you can change it? Are we listening people? If this is the day where Moses he crossed the sea and because of that day the Jews fasted and Muhammad fasted wonderful then how Muhammad he changed the date just because you want to look differently. Isn't it obvious that Muhammad is a fraud? Because if this is the day, uh, you know the funny they say that the Christians, they, they say the Jews and the, the Christians, they corrupt. Look at you, you are corrupt in history. Moses, if, if Moses is cross in the 10, Okay, well, you must have changing the to nine. Why? What? What? What is the purpose exactly? Ah, we don't want to look like the Christians and the Jews, and the same exactly for the the, the Adan. You know why? Why Muhammad he chose the Adan? Anyone knows? Is it Allah who told him to do the Adan? Any Muslim? Did Muhammad receive an order from Allah to do Adhan? Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Huh? <clears throat> the Hadith says, and thank you for the Hadith exposing Muhammad. Muhammad was trying to find, as, as I told you, trying to establish a religion. He don't have one. The Christians, they have the bill, you know. Just Jews, they have, you know, the horn they called for prayer, you know. Uh, Muslims, how they call them for prayer? Once Muhammad, he saw a Muslim holding a bill in his hand and he is going to use it. Muhammad, he said to the man, why you are holding this bill? Are you saying it? The man, the Muslim man, he said, no. Uh, Muhammad didn't like the idea. Muhammad, he decided to find a way to call for a prayer. Some story they say that this guy, that he saw him, he is not even a Muslim, he's a Christian, but whatever it is. But then we find that Muhammad, he have a meeting with his companions. 
And let me find the hadith for you. Um, Uh, where we will find it. All right. Let us see. Okay, this is Sahih, so the Muslim cannot say uh, we are making things up. When Allah Messenger order, ordered a bill to be made so that it might be struck to gather the, the people for prayer. When the Messenger of Allah ordered a bill to be made so that it might be struck to gather the people for prayer. Muslims, are you there? How Muhammad wanna call the people for a prayer? A bill? A man carrying a bill in his hand appeared to me while I was asleep. And I said, servant of Abdul Allah, oh, this is supposed to be in the dream. Will you sell this bill? Muhammad is looking for a bill. Suppose this is a dream now, not the real. So Muhammad said to the guy who he saw in the dream, would you like to send me this bill? Because he needed for the call to the prayer like the Christians. He asked, will you do it? Do with it? I replied, we shall use it to call the people to prayer. He said, should I, uh, should I not accept your uh, you something better? Uh, sorry, suggest you something better than that I replied certainly then he said he told me to say Allah is the most great Allah the most great Allah the most great great most great remember here there's no Jibreel it's a dream supposedly the story here says that now just to show you how Muslim they lie to Muslims about this there is different hadith totally oppose what this story here is saying when the muslims the companions of Muhammad, as they called him, the gang. They gathered together and they were wondering how we can call people for prayer because people are not able to know when the prayer time is. And even the prayer, which, which day is going to be? Is it Saturday? Is it, is it Sunday? Why Muhammad he chose a Friday? You will find that all those things happen because Muhammad he wanted to be different. Let me find the other hadith. <clears throat> About it. Let us see. Uh, 
I'm trying just to find the height for you in English. Give me a second. All of this will lead us to one thing, that Muhammad is not a prophet. He is just trying to build up a religion. Okay. Read carefully. You see how this, the story changed now? They are trying to find out how to do the a call for prayer. Chapter, the call of the prayer section. And as said, they mention kindling fire and to use for the uh, the use of the bill which one like we can light a fire so people they come for the prayer or we use a bill and mention the jews and the christians then bilal was ordered to repeat the call to prayer twice this is one story let us go What you see here in front of us here, they are they are suggesting to Muhammad to do this: use the bell, use fire, you know. And then they come to a conclusion that let us do this. Let us see the other story. This is the same hadith I showed you already. Look at this hadith. A disaster. This is the, this is a disaster. Look at this. This is Al-Bukhari. When the Muslims arrived to the Medina, they used to assemble for a prayer and used to guess the time. They guessed the time for it during these days. The practice of Adhan for a prayer had not been introduced yet. Once they discussed this problem regarding the call for a prayer, some people, which means some Muslims, companion of Muhammad, so just to use the bell like the Christians. And this is why we see Muhammad himself, he ordered to make a bell. Other proposed a trumpet like the horn of the Jews, to use by the Jews. But Umar was the first to suggest, read carefully, Umar was the first to suggest that man should call the people for a prayer. Oh boy. And this is Al-Bukhari. So the story about the dream is false. This is Sahih. And this is Al-Bukhari. The first one who come with the way to call for a prayer is not Allah, is not Jibreel, it is not Muhammad. It was in a discussion about what to do to solve the problem. And as usual, the solution come from Umar. Umar al-Khattab, he says, in some hadith says, Allah, he agree with me in 10. Some they say five, some they say three, some they say seven. Including the Kaaba. Why the Muslim they face the Kaaba now? It was Umar. Hijab. Who is the one who made the hijab? Allah or Muhammad? No, it was Umar. The ritual of the house of Abraham, Omar. Even Muhammad, he says, if there is a messenger will come after me or a prophet will come after me, that will be Omar. My Lord called her, uh, 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 concord with me my judgment between my two brackets my judgment on three <laughs> three occasions in the case of the station of abraham in the case of observing the fail veil and the case of the prison, prisoner of Badr. and those three by the way they are different from story to story which means they will end like 20 30 40 50 and you will find that the most important things in islam is made by omar i mean look the kaaba is omar the hijab is omar the adhan is omar so what is left Are we following? The Kaaba is order came from Umar. 
And then Allah, he took the verses of Umar, the same as I have said. Look, this is Al-Bukhari. Umar, he says clearly that Allah, the verses came the same as I said was revealed. Read, read carefully. So the verse, this verse came down the same as I had said was revealed. Do you see it? Islam is not a religion. This guy is, you know, he doesn't know what to do. He's claiming to be a prophet. Okay, guys, what we do now? All the Jews walk by and the Jews says, this is how we do it. They act differently. <clears throat> this is a religion. See, for Friday and Saturday, Why Muhammad he chose Friday instead of Saturday? That is a question, by the way. Muslims don't dare to answer. I ask all the questions anyway. Because remember, in the Quran, Allah he made the Jews pigs and monkeys for breaking the Sabbath. You remember? Okay, that's mean this is a bit <coughs> This is the day for Allah. <coughs> that's it. This is the day for Allah. He broke his day. Allah will make you a monkey. And by the way, I saw a lot of monkeys around me. They are breaking Sabbath, you know. I mean, look like Allah, he stopped making monkeys since then, you know, like, you know, and the funny, by the way, if you do work in Saturday, Allah will make you a monkey. But if you rape it Saturday, Allah will not. If you kidnap a child or, you know, no, he will not. No. Uh, if you, uh, you know, uh, uh, do anything, I mean, uh, only for breaking Saturday, he will make you a monkey. Mm -hmm. And what, what those Jews, they did, they did not do anything wrong. I mean, According to the story, uh, they did fishing in Saturday. There's a cartoon on the internet. I don't know if somebody have <clears throat> the link for it. It's funny. You can watch it. It's a, a draw and like it's an images. In this verse, chapter seven, verse one sixty three. The story speak about the Jews who did fishing in Saturday. And Allah, he made the fish come only in Saturday. Allah playing games. So the fish disappeared the whole week. And those are villagers who live in an island, supposedly. And they don't have any source of food. So what Allah, he do, the Muslims, they say this was a test, a test, sorry, test. Okay, what kind of test? You make them hungry, they will eat. So those people who Allah, he made the fish or the whale, come to them only in Saturday, and they run away in the rest of the week. And then when they get hungry, Allah, he cursed them, and he made them pigs and monkeys. And by the way, this is another stupid story from Muhammad, because Muhammad himself, he said that Allah allow you to eat anything, to do anything when you are hungry. As an example, Muslim can eat even pigs, pork. When the Muslim they say pork is forbidden, that's that's, that's false. The Quran say clearly in chapter five, verse number three, it is lawful for you, in kunta fi machmasa, which means in hunger. The translation here is severe hunger. Severe hunger. Right? This is the translation of Muslims. Mahmasa means 
Well, this is what is available. It's not your choice. So you can eat it. In the same time, isn't it Allah, he made all the food of the Jews and the Christians lawful for the Muslims? Hmm? Muslims? By making a verse saying that all the food of the Jews and all the food of the Christians are lawful for you, that means you can eat pork. And the halal propaganda machine is broken because it's what the Quran is saying. Let's see the verse. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Let us find the verse. Hold on. We will go back to Ramadan. You see, this the, the uh, for me, I like to cover uh, many things in the same time so we can give you a full image. I don't know what translation that translation is. What translation? Why the translation is so long? I mean, this guy, he's making it like a... Hilari and Khan. Okay. This day, all things made pure, lawful for you. All things good and pure. All things are pure. All things is good. <laughs> okay, what does that mean? The food of the people of the book is made lawful to you. But hold on. Two verses before it, you told them, don't eat pork. <laughs> and now you are saying, all the food is made pure for you. In the top of that, not only all the food is made pure for you, the people of the book, their food is, is, is good for you too. Do you see the stupidity? Here, this is not, Quran is not a chapter. You see, when the Muslims they say this is a chapter of Al-Ma'idah, those are not verses came in the same time. It's Muslims who put them there. It is Muslims who put them there. This is not the right place. Because if you think about it, There's one is deleting the other one. If we take it in the order, here it says you don't do eat pork, right? Okay. And then and don't eat this and don't eat that. And then here he says, all food is good for you. All is pure. All is made lawful. All. In the top of that, you can eat the people of the book food and you can even have sex with their women. Because he made a verse before saying, don't do that. <laughs> Here you see Muhammad is switching moods. When he want, you cannot eat the people of the book food. And when he want, you can. Okay, what happened? Why why you why they cannot and now they can? What happened? Any Muslim can tell us? What happened? Did the Christian change? Those are the same Christians in the time of Muhammad, the same Jews. Hmm. But as usual, now going back to our uh, 
story. You remember we talk about Ashura. How important Ashura? You know, when Muhammad he says we will change the date of Ashura and we will fast a day before the Jews. But Muhammad he said that this day, if you fast it, is going to cleanse your sin for the previous year. Let me find you the hadith. <coughs> Lord have mercy. Look at this hadith first. Okay, we will go back to this one. Let us go to the one we want. Look at this. The Messenger of Allah was asked about observing Ashura. See here, this is the 10th of Muharram. You see the 10th? But we showed you in different hadith, Muhammad, he promised next year, because the Muslim complained, this is what the Jews, they celebrate. He promised them we would do it in the 9th. You remember? Remember, right? We will change it to the 9th. See it? This is Sahih Muslim, hadith number 11, 3, 4, A. So they told him, but this is this day where, you know, the Christians and the Jews, they uh, respect. It's in the 10th. So Muhammad, he promised them, if we live, inshallah, we are going to practice it in the 10th, sorry, in the 9th, not in the 10th no more. All right. But look what Muhammad did. Muhammad told them that if you fast in the day of the 10th of Muharram, Muharram is the name of the month, that fasting in that day, in that date, will cleanse your sin for a year proceeding. So now we're fasting in the 9th. So we will not get our sin been cleansed. <laughs> Do you see how this guy is making up stories and making up fasting and making up rules and making up reward? You just told them if you fast in the 10th of that month, in the 10th, not in the 9th, not in the 8th, not in the whatever, if you fast in the 10th, that will clean your sin. Okay, hold on, hold on. There's no, there's no Ramadan now. Ramadan does not exist yet. Okay. Why this day, if we fast it, will it cleanse our sin for a year? Well, the Jews, they are fasting this day all their life. That's mean the Jews are going to go to heaven guaranteed. And according to the Hadith here, even the Christians, they said they fasted. That means the Christians, they are going to go to heaven because you fast this day, okay, guys, I'm going to do, sleep around, kill, uh, rape, steal, and then I fast Ashura. Look how easy this religion is. I mean, look how silly, look how stupid, how disgusting. So you go and you do all the garbage in your life, and then you fast, okay, today I'm going to sleep, I will take a nap fasting, and fasting, you know? This is the religion of God. Do we have any Muslim have a comment, have something to say? But then we notice that Muhammad, he, one day he found about Ramadan. He found out a month, it's called Ramadan. Okay, how he found about it? All this time Muhammad is a prophet, but there's no Ramadan. Brother, was Allah hiding Ramadan from him? But Ramadan was a month for the Arab exists before Muhammad. Ramadan is not a name created by Muhammad to say this is Islamic.
Do we have any more time? Wanna say something? How Muhammad he switched from this amazing day, which you fast for one day and erase all your sin. Okay, Muslims, if you fast Ramadan, it's going to erase your sin for the previous year. Not only that, actually. If Muhammad is saying such a statement that this is a day will erase your sin for a preceding year and he just learned about that day from the Jews so where he get the information that this day will proceed and or cleanse your sin by fasting it he just learned this from the Jews yesterday he did not know about it where was Jibreel where was Allah And Muhammad, he used to go around and teach people how to practice Ashura. Hey people, let me tell you how to do it. Okay, okay, you start eating for a little bit, you did? Uh, okay, continue the day fasting. Salama told us that the Messenger of Allah said, a man announced the day of Ashura whenever has eaten, let him eat, not eat, for the rest of the day. If, 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 if this is became a religious stuff now, the day of Ashura is going inside Islam like a nail. It's getting deeper and deeper. Yesterday he learned about it from the Jews, and now Muhammad is creating rules about the day. And then Muhammad, he start after Ashura, he want to create a, like, you know, a habit. You see, he heard the Christians, you know, by the way, the Muslims, they think Christians don't have fasting. We don't talk about it, but we have fasting more than you can believe it. Just to let you know, uh, if you go to the Orthodox or even the Catholic Church, you will see that there is two fasting, the major fasting, but the whole year there is fasting. There is fasting every, every week, but there's two major fasting, like we have now, the Easter is gone, for the for the those who celebrate the Western calendar and those who celebrate the Orthodox calendar, they are, the the Easter is not yet. They are fasting for forty days before the Easter. Why we are fasting? Some churches, they fast 50, you know? Now, fasting is something good to teach you. Uh, let us say, uh, you know, a manner, how to control yourself, uh, how to not to be tempted. And obviously Muhammad trying to find the religion, trying to find a way. The Christian they have fasting, the Christian they have bell, the Christian they have Saturday, Sunday. Uh, Muhammad, what day is going to be mine? What is my what is my religion? What I will call it? Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Anyone? Then Ashura suddenly became not important. Ashura can erase your sin for a year. Okay, what happened now? You Muslims, what happened to Ashura? Why you Muslims don't celebrate it? Don't make a fuss about it, big noise? Huh? 
Is it important or not? One day, Muhammad, he met with a Sabian. A Sabian, who Muhammad, he learned from him. Actually, he met this guy even in Mecca. But he was not learning too much about the Sabian yet. He did not know much about them. He's stealing from them, but he does not. Muhammad is limited in knowledge about everything, about the Christian, about the Jews. You know, he hears stories from those, from that, and he put it there. So, Muhammad one day he come and he told them that we need to fast Ramadan. Muslims, how Muhammad he come to Ramadan? If we go to the Quran, we will find the word Ramadan appear once. And it says Ramadan is the month which was sent down the Quran. The Quran is a guide to mankind. Hmm. And by the way, here, clear sin, this is not in the verse. This is just stupid translation. There's no sin, there is. Between two brackets, this is here, is a garbage, it's not there. Okay, so Allah, he sent the Quran as a guidance. In the month of Ramadan. But this means all the story of Muhammad is a lie. If you are saying to me that the first verse of Muhammad he received, it was received in the month of Ramadan, that means this verse is wrong. Because here it says, this is the day where Allah, he sent down the Quran. He didn't say, I sent down a verse. The whole Quran is sent down. Okay. And is Ramadan a month? Before this uh, translation, let us go on. Look at the Arabic word. It says, Shahru Ramadan. Shahr Ramadan. You ask somebody who speaks Arabic today, he will say to you the word Shahr means month. This is true. But this is not today. The Quran is 1400 years ago. And this is not an Arabic word. This is an Aramaic word. And remember the Sabian they used to speak Aramaic. The word Shahar means moon. The word Shahar is not a month, it is a moon. How we can prove that? Look, if we change the translator, just change the translator, you will see how everything changed in a miraculous way. Let us see a uh, big tile. <clears throat> Here he says, the month of Ramadan, in which has revealed the Quran, guidance for mankind. Clear proof of guidance. Okay. And then here, whoever, who's ever of you present, let him fast. Does it really say that? No. It says in Arabic, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرِ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرِ Whoever I sighted the shahr, the moon, this is why the Muslims, they are celebrating, saying, Hey, Allah Akbar, we saw the moon. You see how they lie to you, and even the translation, they corrupt their Quran to deceive you that they are not following the moon. Whoever of you sight the moon, not the month, you cannot sight a month, you idiot. So whoever of you, and what moon? It have to be the crescent moon. Change the translation. The month of Ramadan. Like this guy, he made Ramadan, Ramadan. <laughs> Aman, Rabbi, Aman. Ramadan, Ramadan. Ramadan became Ramadan. Okay. Is that, is that which Quran was revealed? Guidance, okay, and says it clear, okay. Whoever of you present in this month, how you can present in this month? 
I mean, if there's an option to present or not, what, what do you mean present in this month? This month is coming. We like it. We don't. It's a month. If it's a month. The verse saying, whoever sighed the moon. Like, what's wrong with those, Abdul? Let us change the translation. Sahih International. Maybe we got lucky. Maybe. Hmm. Look at this. Look at this. So whoever sights, sights between two brackets, the new moon of the month. There's no month. You just said the new moon. Let him fast it. Bingo. Okay, what moon exactly we need to sight in order to celebrate Ramadan? And what if we cannot sight it? <laughs> what if you live in Alaska? <laughs> what if you live in Norway? What if you live, if, what if, if the weather is so bad for two or three months? What do you do? The Muslim, they come and say, you say, brother. Uh, we wait a day or two and then we celebrate anyway, you know, but but the Quran says whoever of you sight If we go and read the interpretation you will see clearly it says You have to sight the cursed moon I would like to ask the Muslims so this is not a month This is not a month Ramadan is not a month Ramadan is a moon and that moon is coming and we are waiting for him that moon we call him Ramadan whoever sight the moon see here the translation how it deceived look how this guy ask you ask yourself how this guy here translated the word month instead of the word shahar which mean moon I mean, why here you say, why here you are adding the word moon? Where do you get it from? This is the same word. See here in the same verse, the first two words, he did not translate it as a moon. This is the word shahr. Here, it is a moon. Either he did that because he's an ignorant or because he's a donkey trying to corrupt. You chose one. Both will make you a donkey. So whoever of you, the, the moon of Ramadan is where Allah, he sent the Quran. How many moons Muhammad he have? Do we have any Muslim have an objection? <clears throat> any Muslim have an objection? All of you agree with me? That's nice. Uh, <clears throat> Let me try to find you something. Because somebody might say to you, he's lying to you. It doesn't say that, CP. It doesn't say that, CP. <laughs> Let us try to find an old Hebrew 
or Aramaic dictionary. Um. Okay, hold on. We find something here. Uh. which will take us back to the Egyptian. Let us see. I'm just trying to, I, I found the art here, the book. There's a book here, it's called The Journal of the Manchester Egyptian and Oriental Society. But anyway, let's go to the dictionary uh, better. You see here, this is, you can find this book here. It speak about that the journal, this is the, the in, in Google book, uh, mean the little moon, the word shahar, you know. But anyway, if we go uh, and we try to find some reference, you will find there's many websites and uh, I click at this one but this is a book of an American writer uh, oh this is a PDF file uh, yeah I don't want that hold on let me see if I can find a dictionary. <coughs> Hebrew. What does Shahar mean? This is uh, BB name media, whatever I know. Uh, I hope no sound here. Do we have a sound? Okay, what Shahar is coming from? They will say to you in Hebrew and in Arabic, it's coming from the word moon. You see the word moon? Uh, shahar, Shahar. Yeah. But still, I want to find a dictionary. Hold on. All of this is not official. I want to find something official. <clears throat> like what we are finding now is Wikipedia. I mean, you can take it as a source. Anyone can do uh, editing. <clears throat> uh oh, I found something even better. <coughs> I found an Islamic website saying that. Oh boy, <coughs> and let's put it on the screen. And this is even where the, the word Hilal itself, you know, the Muslim they say Hilal. Hilal means the new moon too. <laughs> the Quran speak about Ahilla. Let us see, hold on. I will give you this link. Allah connected Shahar, i.e. ruling, that which is called Hilal, and Shahar, that's at the beginning of the end of the fast, and sacrifice. Allah said, Allah says, interpretation of the meaning, uh, about the new moon, says, this is a sign mark, as fixed, uh, okay, for pilgrimage, okay, the new moon is Al-Hilal, Ahilla, Okay. 
Uh, anyway, so here they are saying clearly to you that the, the word shahar, the word shahar is about the moon. Analogy with the new moon. Okay. See, whoever of you sight the new moon of Ramadan, do you see it? So Ramadan is a moon. And whoever sight the new moon, because Ramadan is a moon, who appear once a year, and this is what the Sabian, they believe, the Sabian, they go, they have two cities in the north of Iraq. So they say goodbye to the moon last year when the end of Ramadan is over. And then when the new moon come in, they go to different city and they wait for the new moon. That is Ramadan. So whoever of you sight the new moon, which is Ramadan, Let me post this link for you. This is a Muslim website, which is even better to use, because now Muslim cannot say uh, this is you know fiction; it's a lie. You can save it. All right. Still, I want to find a Hebrew website. Uh, here we go. Finally, we found a Hebrew dictionary. Uh, oh, this is sorry. This is Harvard University. I don't want Harvard University. The University of the rich, not of the smart. Hmm. Okay, here we go. We found the Hebrew dictionary. Wonderful. Uh, Ocarina Jude, uh, this is what this is. Safira Kane Dictionary. I don't know what this dictionary is about. Uh, Arab Shahar, Ethiopian Shahar. Regardless what they are saying there, it's not really, I don't care. But just I want to show you that the word uh, Shahar mean moon and mean the moon god too. It's the crescent moon. And this is exactly what Muslims wait for. Do you see it? The word shahar, this is the word shahar, is the moon. Which moon? The crescent moon. Even if we go to the Islamic website, like the Seer website, <clears throat> let us see. Hmm. You see, you remember I told you that the verse saying that Allah, he sent the Quran? He sent the Quran, right? Look what they are trying to solve the problem. They said, these days of the month of Ramadan, wherein the Quran was revealed from the pre preserved tablet to the earthy, have, earthy heaven on the night of Al-Qadr. We showed you that the Egyptian, as the, the, the Muslim scholar in the, in the video, he said that the Egyptian, they have the night of Al-Qadr, and they celebrate Ramadan. And this is the belief that when revelation came down from God, 
to the one who present him in earth. All right. Let us change our interpretation. <clears throat> this month, Ramadan, is the month which revealed the Quran, whereupon Gabriel brought down the entire Quran to the first heaven. Look at this madness. Jibreel, he brought the Quran, the entire Quran. You see what I told you? I told you the verse here is wrong because if Allah, he sent the Quran, the verse doesn't say Allah sent the verse. The verse says Allah, he sent down the Quran. So the Quran is already revealed. And now the Muslims, they try to solve it. They say, oh, he revealed it. He sent it down, but to the first heaven. But this is not down yet. Still, still, we will not receive it. Because you Muslim, you claim that Muhammad, he received the Quran in that day. Not the Quran sent to the first heaven. Why Muhammad, he live in the first heaven? So the Muslim, to find solution for the stupidity of the verse here, they come with, the, with their own uh, fabrication saying, Oh Allah, he sent the Quran, yes, but not to us. He sent it down to the lowest heaven. Why Allah, he do that? I mean, what the... What, do you, what lowest heaven? What do you mean lowest heaven? Here you will see that the one who make explanation for the Quran, they are stupid. Why? Because the Quran itself says the following. I'm typing in English. <clears throat> what a stupid cult. I mean, and the search engine is really... It's faster to find from the search engine from opening the, the chapters. <clears throat> All right. So if we go to the chapter of Al-Hajj, and remember, this is Al-Hajj chapter. In this chapter it says that the angels, Allah, he arranged the affair from the heaven to the earth. And they will go up to him on a day which is equal to 1,000 years if you're counting. Okay, so where is the Quran? Where is the Quran? You see, if the Quran, because the, uh, the angels, they get their orders from the Quran. They don't see Allah. All the Muslims agree that the angels, they get their orders from the tablet. But they just told us that the tablet is in the lowest heaven according to the interpretation but the verse here says he arranged every affair from the heaven to the earth then its affair will go up to him in a day up to him not to the lowest heaven so the tablet is there and the funny uh, Allah have a tablet I mean what 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 what, uh, what is that you know, Allah, he wrote the tablet and he put it between the eyes of an angel. His name is Israfil. And this is another story Muhammad, he stole from the Jews. If you ask the Muslim, what Israfil mean? They don't know. What Jibreel mean? They don't know. What Mikael didn't know? They don't know. There are names. They stole them. Did you ask even you ask yourself, why Jibreel? His name is Jibreel, not Jibreel Allah. Because Eel is a word meaning God in the Aramaic language. And even in the Hebrew. That's why we say Emmanuel, Mikael, Gabriel, Israel, Ishmael. All those words end with Il. Il is word mean God. So how come the angel of Allah, he end with Il and we cannot find Il anywhere in the Quran? How suddenly Quran became Arabic, but the names they, they, they still belong to different religion, belong to different language. 
if the Arabic is the most favorite language for Allah, how come all the names he have for us are four names? If you ask the Muslims, okay, who is this guy, Abraham? What Abraham mean? They don't know. Ishmael, what Ishmael mean? Isaac, Jacob, Israel. They don't know because everything in Islam is a theft. So Allah, he sent the Quran in the month of Ramadan? No, he sent it in the moon of Ramadan. And whoever of you witnessed that moon, whoever of you sight that moon, let me see uh, uh, Abni Kathir in English, what he is saying about this one. Let us see how much they, they, they deleted from the interpretation. Usually those things are not important for them, so they don't delete much. Uh, let us go to Abni Kathir. <laughs> All right, let us see if Nikath you're here. <clears throat> okay, hold on, I think. 2185, right, ah, where we are here? Why is taking me here? Oh, this is 84. I was wondering why it is. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Look here how they try to lie to you, but in the same time they get themselves busted. So whoever of you cite the crescent on the first night of the month Ramadan, where is the word month? And where is the word crescent? Are you adding words or simply how how Ibn Kathir he come to the conclusion that this is the crescent moon? Because simply this is what the word shahar mean. Shahar mean moon. Allah he have a twelve moons. And this moon, every moon have his own house. You see here the translation because they don't understand what the verse is saying. So there's 12 moons. And each moon have his own palace. If you watch those, uh, uh, what they call them, zodiac, you know, the zodiac thing. Let me see if I can find them, put them for you in the screen, so you, you you get excited, especially those who believe in those silly stuff. Zodiac. Uh, here we go. I will put it. Let us see. You know those things, right? The zodiac. Those they present houses. Houses of the moon. And the moon is the one who is in charge of what you will be and what will happen to you. You will be a happy person a sad person you will be worthy you will be filthy you will be bad you will be good whatever you will be muhammad he took from the old legions 
everything with no exception and he adopted and even in the Quran Muhammad he made it clear that there's a 12 moons if we go you see we proved to you already that the word mean the word uh, shahar mean moon right We proved to you already the word shahar mean moon. The Quran say clearly the numbers of moons for Allah are 12. The number, let us put the screen for you again. <clears throat> Lord have mercy. See, sharing information, uh, too much information, let us say, is not easy. Some people, they cannot handle it. It's too much. That's why not many people like, you know, to watch my videos. They are long and too much information coming. And it's not relaxing, really. Indeed, the numbers of moons, not month. Remember, the word shahar, we prove it to be. A word mean moon. So the number of moons for Allah is 12 moons. The Arab who decided to fix the problem which they inherited from others, the lunar moon. They used to add every three years, 33 days. Thirty. Hold on. In chapter 9, verse number 37, Muhammad, he called those who try to not to practice the Sabian. The Sabian, they don't change the calendar. They don't add days to the calendar. They just follow it. The calendar keep coming, whatever the month will be. Like now Ramadan, for the Muslims, it can come in July, it can come in December, it can come in August. Why? Because it's a wrong calendar. The Arab they used to do corrected every three years. The Jews they correct it every year. This is why you will see that the Jews they celebrate their occasion, their holiday in 15 of Nisan. Nisan is the name of the month which is have to come in a certain date. They're gonna change it. So what they do, they have to add days to the end of the year. So in order to keep that month to come in the same day every year, they have to correct it. Muhammad, he considered such an act, an act of the devil. Why? Because the Sabi and they told him that this is wrong. So look what Muhammad says. Indeed, post, you know, like uh, adding, adding months to the, to the year of Allah is act of kuffar if you go and read those verses interpretation what you will find because when you read it here it doesn't say anything i mean this quran is something stupid i mean what we read from this what you learn from this nothing what indeed postponing restriction of when the second month is an increase of disbelief what does that mean you have to go and see what the Muslims saying in their scholars and then you will find that the verse itself have nothing to do with what they are saying. I mean, it's, it's confusing because the Quran is made by a stupid idiot. And his language doesn't fit with the mind of anyone who can understand Arabic. 
So if we go to the Quran interpretation, chapter 9, verse number 37. You will see here they are speaking about that the kuffar they are adding month to the year that they make up that they make they match the number of months with Allah which has we make it holy so those are up in order to correct the calendar they add every three years they add a month and this month is rejected by Muhammad. And this is why the Islamic calendar now is messed up. Like Muslims, they celebrate the day of Muhammad's birth. You will find he's born in January sometime, sometime in July, sometime in February. It's all over the place. Why? Because Muhammad, he refused the Arab correction for the calendar. For Allah, he made the 12 moons. Who are you to add one more? Allah did not have 12 moon. Allah, he have, sorry, he don't have a 13 moon. He have 12. So we have to preserve the 12 moon of Allah. And the one who add a moon to the moon, he is committing evil. Do we have any Muslim here? <clears throat> See, they are delaying a month. How they delay that? They are the month because the calendar is wrong. You cannot delay it, but if they don't delay it, the, 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 uh, the calendar is, is, is screwed up. Your Ramadan, it might come in December, and a few years after, it might come in July. Every year, the calendar of Ramadan is different from the year before it. If we go right now and search in Prophet Google, peace upon him. <coughs> What we will find? I just searched Prophet Google. It says to me that Ramadan, depend in the year, you know, like whatever year you are in. Every year is different. Look at this. So how this is can be a month? This is a moon. And Muhammad saying to them, whenever the moon come, the moon come. The moon of Ramadan, we cannot, we cannot delay it. It's not up to you. So, the month of Ramadan, I want, uh, I want Ramadan only. Hold on, is that Ramadan only? Yeah. Look, look, look what they are saying to you here. Due to the Hijri calendar related, uh, uh, the Hijri year are given as well as help uh, clarify energy, etc. Okay, okay, let us see. Hold on, I want just Ramadan, I don't want all this garbage. Okay, read and laugh. The date of the moon of Ramadan in the year 2021 start in April 13, 22 April 2nd, 23 March 23rd, 24 March 11, 
25 March 1st, 26 February 18, 27 etc. As you see, February, January, June, you know, you know, you name it. Where is where is the calendar of Allah? How the moon of Allah is switching between July and December. And by the way, this calendar continue like you know forever, like the same. Every every year there is almost ten days or eleven days. Like here, from <clears throat> March eleven and then March first. March first and then here February eighteen. February 18 and then February 8 so we take down 10 days in every year to come and this is why Ramadan keep moving so the Arab they used to fix the wrong calendar but because Muhammad is following the moon God he cannot play with his God he is following the Sabian and actually there's a hadith that clearly says that Muhammad was a Sabian man and by the way, the Sabian, they believe that Pharaoh, he was a Sabian. And that's why the, the Sabian, they hate the Jews and they believe that their God Adonai is the devil. And that's why he ordered them to cut and circumcise. And here you ask yourself, how in the world Muhammad, he accept circumcision? This is why there's a guy, his name is Amir. He, he was a, a, a big rabbi or let's say a scholar for the Sabian. He said to Muhammad, or the, the, he's a Hanif. He says, Muhammad, he follow Hanif and he add things to it. Hanif. This is the Sabian, Hanif. Hanif means kuffar, by the way. <laughs> so if you go in the Hadith, let me see if I can find the... <clears throat> okay, I found it. Let's put it in the screen. Are we taking long? Are you guys tired? Who is tired? Look at this hadith of me. <clears throat> Muhammad, he was with his uh, uh, gang looking for victims as usual to rape them, steal their money, take them women. So they needed water. So they went to search for water and they met a woman who was sitting on her camel between two bags of water. They ask, where we can find water? Eh, an old woman, she is getting her water. She replied, I was there, and she, which means she is pointing her fingers there. This hour yesterday, and my people are behind me. They requested her to accompany them. She asked, where? They said to messenger of to Allah messenger, she said, do you mean the man who is called Sabi'i? Do you see it? What the Muslim, they said, yes. Do you see it, people? The woman, she said, is that the man? Who people call him Sabi, which means from the Sabian. The Muslim they said to you, no, no. At that time, anyone leave the religion, they saw him call him Sabi. What's wrong? Sabi is Sabian. What is Sabi? Okay, anyone leave religion, they call him a Christian. Sabi is the name of religion. So is that the one they call him Sabi? They said yes. Actually, you know, you will see in my coming book, uh, I'm working in a book, it's called The Roots of the Quran. Uh, I mean, there is actually a good part of it, but because this topic is so much complicated and you know, sometimes you will sit and you wanna write and it really give you a lot of headache because uh, uh, it's very complicated topic and you have to get your resource from, like, I mean, it's really crazy. But this is very will be a very interesting book, The Roots of the Quran, because we will compare about things where Muhammad is coming, where, where Muhammad is taking his stories from.
And I cannot put all the stories there, otherwise my book will be like a thousand pages, maybe, or two thousand pages. So I will try to make like a summary of the most important things in Islam. Otherwise, like the same as it in Sex of Allah, if I want to write everything about Islam, speaking about sex, I will not have a space in the biggest library in this earth to write about it because all of Islam is about sex. So the same here, when we talk about the roots of the Quran, we have to find the source of it. Like there's a book, it's called Kenza Rabba. Kenza Rabba is the book of the Sabian. And you will notice right away if you open the book of Kenza Rabba as if you are reading the Quran. Let me let me see the, the, this. Hold on. Let me open the book. I'm just flipping the book. This is the book of the Sabian. It's Quran. It is literally a Quran. And actually here in page number 14, this book have right, Kenza Rabba right, and Kenza Rabba left. It might be confusing for you, but the book is divided to two parts. One is called the right, and one is called the left. Uh, here is talking about fasting, etc. <clears throat> but if you read, you will see that it is it is Quran. Even the way it is made, it is Quran. Uh, anyone who speak Arabic, he can read now, and he will he will die laughing at Muhammad copying. Uh, from the Quran, from from this book, a lot. And you will notice too that it is the same style of rab words. <clears throat> and you will see the first page in the book of Kanzara Barait is Tawheed. Do you see it? But this is the book of the Sabian. This is Kenza Rabba, right? Okay, how Kenza Rabba write? Speaking about Tawheed. Any Muslim? What Tawheed mean? Do those people believe in one God? They worship stars. They worship angels. Actually, even their name, they call themselves al mandanaiyin The word Mandanai is a name for an angel who is like a god for them. He is the one who created them. He is the one who made things. And those people believe that those angels, they have ranks. They are gods, but they have ranks higher ranks, lower ranks. There's angels who create, there's angels who cannot create, there's angels who they can forgive, there's angels who cannot forgive, which means every group of angels, they have a job, and the highest is the one who can create. And the one who can create is in total agreement with Allah. Actually, there's a story, if you remember, when uh, <clears throat> when he, Allah, he ordered Adam to bow down, sorry, the angels to bow down to Adam. Let 
me see. Uh, let us see. Anyway, this is a different topic, but you will see, like, I mean, how much Muhammad is copying uh, from this book. This book, when I'm done with it, is going to be very interesting, but it's taking too much time. I'm working on this book almost now for, I think, I think three years, you know. But I will finish it for sure. I'm not able to sit every day and write in it, but I think soon I will start, like, taking... Uh, taking some time off from YouTube and those things so I can write. Anyway, <clears throat> do we have any Muslim have an objection for what we said? Anyone can prove us wrong? Anyone? If you remember, we explained to you before Tawheed, it does not mean oneness of God. Tawheed means uniting God. Like if you type right now, if I go to Google Translation, let us do this in the front of your eyes. <clears throat> All right. I will type the word Tawheed in the front of you. I will make it a sentence. Switch to Arabic. Okay, choose Arabic. Do you see? I just typed the Tawheed the way Arabia. Do you see it? This is Tawheed. Hmm? I will play the sound for you too, so you can see. I type the word Tawheed. You will hear it in Arabic. It says Tawheed. Let us, let us put it in Arabic. Let us turn the speaker on. Tawheed al-Dual al-Arabiyyati. You see it? Tawheed al-Dual al-Arabiyyati. Okay. Tawheed mean what? Unification. Tawheed al-Dual al-Arabiyyati. Hmm? Where is the oneness of God? Do you see it? Tawheed is unification. You don't unify something is one. If something is one, you don't unif you do not need to unify what is one already. It's one. It's united. And actually, you don't unite the one. The one is one, because uniting the one uh, make it not one. Because obviously you just united together. So Tawheed means unification. So when we say in Arabic, Tawheed al-Dual al-Arabiyya, we are saying the unification of the Arab countries. Tawheed al-Dual al-Arabiyya. So what is the one nice? Tawheed al-Dual al-Arabiyya. I don't, uh, I don't see the word. Let us see here. The unification of the Arab countries. Man, her voice is scary. Thank God I'm not married to her. I don't want to wake up and hear this voice every morning. What she said? The unification of the Arab countries. She must be a machine, man. This her voices are annoying. Hey, Google, find a real, a real woman talking, man. I say, oh, Google. And... Do we have any Muslim? So they try to fool us and they say, uh, we believe in the oneness of God, but you don't. You don't. It's a lie. Uh, and you, you remember before we mentioned to you when Allah, he said in the Quran, if we like to have a partner, a wife, lahu, or lahu is a woman, the word lahu, uh, mean women. So the Quran says, if Allah would like, if I, if He didn't say I, if we, if we had intended to take a partner, a wife, 
we will take it from ourself okay Allah want to take a wife from ourself if Allah is one who is ourself who he will marry from and look at the funny translation that says our presence but it doesn't say that you change the translator you will find the Quran changed totally changed this is big tab let us go to different idiot look what happened we just changed the translator we did not change the book had we intended we intended to take a past time i.e. wife or a son you need to take a wife in order to have a son we could surely have taken it from us okay how Allah is one and he would like to take a wife from us Allah is going to have sex with himself like shaitan shaitan according to Muslims Allah created for him the first shaitan Allah created for him a penis in the right thigh and a vagina in the left thigh and then he shake this into this and he do nikah and then he which means if himself and then he laid 10 eggs true story so when they say to you we believe in the oneness of God the Muslim they believe in Tawheed not in the oneness Muhammad he unite between gods Allah and Akbar Allah al lah al lah God lah the moon God and Akbar the sun God now somebody like an idiot like James White he said to you no the, when somebody says to you the Muslim worship the moon God uh, this is not true the Quran says don't worship the moon you idiot the moon God is not the moon you are a certified donkey This is why it says Allah, he had the 12 moons. He is the God of the moons. Donkey. This is why you see Abraham, when he was looking for God, he said, this is my God, this is Akbar. He was talking about what? He was talking about the sun. Chapter 6, verse number 78. So Abraham first, according to Muhammad, he started worshipping the planets. stars he saw a planet we don't know which one Muhammad did not say here in the Quran he said this is my God and then when this planet or star disappear he said I don't like the one who disappear and here the story is very funny very stupid why because now we are assuming that Abraham was blind all his life and the first time he opened his eyes it was night and this is the first time he noticed that this star would disappear you see how stupid the story like he did not notice before that the star disappear, and the, do the star disappear anyway? This is God talking, supposedly not. And by the way, when the Muslims they say to you the Quran, nobody can make Quran. Don't they say that? People, don't the Muslims they say to you, no one can make Quran? Is that correct? We, I just said Allahu Akbar, Allah, Allah is the name of the moon god, Akbar is the moon god, is the sun god. This is why here, if you go down, it says, when he saw the moon rising up, he said, this is my Lord, but he, it said, so unless my Lord guide me, I shall not surely uh, be among the, the, the Aryan people. So he was worshiping the moon, not the moon god, you know, but then he saw the sun. And he called the son Akbar. Muhammad at that moment, he was trying to make the Jews believe that he is like them. He's a Jew. See, Muhammad is like Obama. He's a Muslim with the Muslim. He's a Jew with the Jew. Like Obama, he go to Egypt, he called the Quran. Obama, he go to Jerusalem, he wear the hat of the Jews. Obama sit with the atheist, he make fun of the Bible. Obama sit with the gays, he is a gay. Ah, this is how to, how to be a president, you know? Corrupt word. 
So when he saw the sun rising, he said, this is Akbar. He did not say this is a creator. He says, this is Akbar. Akbar is what the sun is described. How come he did not describe the moon, Akbar? Is really the sun is bigger? Is it? Why he called it Akbar? Actually, there's in Tafsir Ibn Kathir, uh, there is there is a sonam. His name is Akbar. The Muslim they take it off from the uh, Ibn Kathir print, but it's exists in the old one. Let me show you. Like in the other day, I went to search for it. They took it off from the new print. Look, look at the corruption, look at this religion. This is the book of Nibni Kathir, and this is the, the older copies. كانوا يعبدون أصناما فصنم يقال له here this one sorry this one is about Samad don't you the Muslim they say Allah is Samad don't the Muslim they say Samad Allah is a Samad قل هو الله أحد الله is Samad that is taken from other religion from the from from the from the Sabian so there is there is a statues ancient statues was exist in the Arabian Peninsula, exist everywhere. And there was one was exist next to the Kaaba or inside the Kaaba. And the other one called Samud. There's Samud and there's Samud. They took it off. Look, here, they took it off, they changed it from someone to sad Sadda. <laughs> Just to cover the, 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 the scandals, what they are worshipping. I mean, if it is says that, I mean, how you can even change a book? It's already printed everywhere. Well, by time, people who have the original book, they will die and nobody will have it no more. Very simple. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Anyone? So Ramadan is a pagan month, and if there is a priest, he is asking Christian children to 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 recite Quran or etc. in their churches for Ramadan. This priest is, is, is supporting the devil. We love the Muslims, but loving Muslims is not by loving the cult of Islam. This is something and something else, Islam. Any priest, he do such a thing. Don't take your children to his church, for his church is a synagogue of the devil. Remember the Lord, he says, not everyone says to you, says to me, Lord, Lord, God, God will enter the kingdom of my father. There's many liars of them. So if you ever see a priest is trying to promote the cult of Islam, he's a church, you should know that you, you should know better that he is no Christian. Do you agree? Never trust a priest, by the way. And never trust me even. Trust God. Who am I? All of us, we are sinners. So anyone he bring you teaching other than what is in the scriptures is not to follow, period.
We don't follow a man. We don't follow a priest. We don't follow a bishop. We don't follow the pope. We don't follow Protestant. We don't follow Orthodox. We don't follow uh, 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 whatever. We follow what Jesus said. Anything else, anyone bring something is not what Christ he said. The Bible says, who is the Antichrist? Is the one who denied the Father and the Son. So when this priest is singing for Ramadan, he is singing for the for, for Satan. The Bible said it clearly. Who is the, who is the one? Who is the Antichrist? You do not need to be a genius if you see a, such a, a someone. He called himself a priest. Ask him such a like. Who is the one? Who is Antichrist in the Bible? According to the Bible, let us see what he will say. It is the one who denied the Son and the Father. Don't Islam deny both. Islam don't believe that we have a Father. And Islam does not believe that God have a Son. So when somebody claimed to be a priest, he's teaching according to who? They say to you, this is interfaith, to be nice to Muslim. Be nice to Muslim, uh, give a donation, feed the poor people. Go walk in the street. If you see somebody is a Muslim and he's poor, help him. Not by praying to Allah. By pray you, when you pray to Allah, you are not feeding the Muslim. You are not feeding Muslim, you are not feeding Christian. You know, this is what people help. Those people are evil. Hypocrites. Taqiyya. You know, there's many, they practice taqiyya every day. He is Antichrist, the one who denied the Father and the Son. So Muhammad in the Quran labeled as he who deny, and he is the liar. And not, not only, you know, when, when the Bible says, uh, who is the liar and then the Bible says he who denied that Jesus is the Christ and he is Antichrist who denies the father and the son so Muhammad he have two description in the same time he is Antichrist and he is a liar so when somebody claimed to be a priest and he said to you, I'm going to teach the children in our churches to sing for Ramadan. What is Ramadan? A month brought or celebration ritual by the man who killed people in Ramadan. This is the month where Muhammad slaughtered the Christians. This is actually the last war they have against Israel. It was the war of Ramadan. Ramadan is not the month of peace. Muslims, they said to you, oh, in Ramadan, we don't have war. Most of the wars Muhammad did and Muslim did, it was in Ramadan. But who is the liar? It is the one who denied the Father. It is the one who denied Christ. How do you deny Christ? Oh, Muhammad, he says that Jesus is the Christ. He, no, actually, he gave him a different name. He said that he says the Christ. We don't know what he said. But let us say for the sake of argument, Muhammad is a stupid and he thought this name is correct. Still, he don't believe. And he teach his followers. To kill those who believe that Jesus is a son of the Father. And this is why he is an Antichrist. He's a liar. He's a false prophet. He have a false prophecy. All the prophecies of Muhammad are false. And I change any Muslim right now. If any one of them he can show me one prophecy is not false. After all those hours I am live on air, I'm willing to open my pal talk for you. If you have the guts to show me one prophecy Muhammad said is not a fraud. Just one. They don't dare. But if you are a guy who is a blonde with blue eyes, the Muslims will be lined up to prove you wrong. But in my case, nobody show up. Anyone?
So my friends, anyone he call himself a priest and he bring a good image of Islam to your children, this guy is more dangerous than the devil himself. Take your children away from him. This is the only thing you can do. Let his church go empty and warn people about this liar. Show them this verse. Who is the Antichrist? This is the Bible. This is not the priest. The Bible says the one who denied the Father, the Son. That's it. We do not need to debate. We do not need to argue. We do not need to be scholars. So if you see such a people like this, promoting the cult of Muhammad, those are false priests. Those, they will go to hell. Don't let them go to hell and take your children with you. Uh, the prophecy of Muhammad saying Islam, I don't know about that one. If it's going to be true or not, we will see. Any Muslim? You know what? I think I'm, I'm thinking now to to make my coming broadcast. I call it Muhammad is a false prophet. Prove me wrong. And we will challenge the Muslims, any Muslim, to call us and show us one prophecy of Muhammad. Now it's time to go, and I want to say thank you guys for being here. I hope we learn to we learn together a lot of things together. And uh, I wish I can share with you more, you know, but uh, sadly, the, the, the language barrier is always make what I do limited, very limited, actually. Uh, but what we are sharing with you is extremely enough to defeat Islam. It's more than enough. Islam is the most stupid cult ever you can imagine. I mean, I do not need to be a genius to, to believe, uh, to, to, to know that this is going to be God. I mean, God, he promised me big boobs, endless penis. I mean, what is this? Are we talking about a God or talking about a cartoon? So Islam is very silly, very stupid. But don't think because it's stupid, there's not somebody is going to be fooled by the stupidity. Because if you go on YouTube, you will see how much money they invest science and the Quran. Do you ask yourself why they are making those videos? So they can control your mind and make you believe that this is an amazing book when the book is nothing but a joke. So many they will be deceived because many they are not helping to spread the truth. Many of you come here and just watch and laugh, but you don't go around and share the truth. You don't download the video and repost. You see, if a Christian prince was a Muslim, I will have a hundred thousand people watching my video now, live. I don't want to compare myself to the idiot Zachary Naik, but look how many he they watch him, and look how many they watch me. Why? Because a Christian they don't support really. They like to watch, sadly. If you if I open my email, I will find every day. 80, 100, 200, I don't know. Can you answer this guy? Can you refute this guy? Did you see this video? As if there's no Christian in this earth except me. Did you ask yourself why you don't do it yourself? Why only me? I am the only Christian left. So they wanna, oh, you are the one who is so good in it, but you can do your part. I cannot do everything. And the funny, the Muslim, they think I have an army behind me. They think I have assistants, I have secretary. Hey, secretary, can you bring me some water? Uh, water, come. Look how fast my secretary is. I have Khadija here. <clears throat> Thank you, secretary. Yeah. So, do your part. Don't be a person who watch. One day the Lord, he will ask you what you did, where you been? He did what you did. He did. Yeah, he did. What about you? If you think that day is not coming, you are mistaken. Time so goes so fast. 
unless you are a female. Time is frozen, you know, that's it. The spray fixer, fixture, what they call it, this one for the hair. And that's it, like, time doesn't go. Like, what? I'm 17 years old, you know? My mom, she is 17. My grandma, she is 16. Yeah. <clears throat> time goes so fast, my friend. And time will come, and there will be questions about what you did. If you are a male or a female, it doesn't matter. All right? And don't worry about what people say. Worry about what God will say about you. The Lord, he says, from their fruits, you shall remember them. You shall know them. Not from your names. Your name doesn't count. You call yourself a Christian. You call yourself Mary. You call yourself George. You call, call yourself whatever you want. It is what you do. Yeah, like here we have a predictor. Uh, he, he have a lot of... Uh, work actually he did translating so subscribe to his channel by the way anyone those who download my videos if you want to watch my videos because i don't I, I delete them subscribe to them so always you can see what you missed support them deserve your support all right uh do a refutation class for us so we can refute muslims this is what i do here in torah what are you talking about everything we are doing here is teaching you how to refute them so what I was doing for the last three hours now, what I did yesterday and the day before and the day before and the day before, we are teaching you how to refute them. My, my friend, knowledge, seek knowledge, not refutation. Seek knowledge. When you have knowledge, you can refute anyone when he says something wrong. If he says something right, you agree with him. So seek knowledge, don't seek challenge. Because challenge can be foolish too, you know. I mean, okay, I'm going to prove them wrong, but what they are right. So seek knowledge. That's why the Lord He says, search the books, read them, and then what will happen? Then you will know the truth. And what will happen then? The truth will set you free. But if you go in the Quran in chapter five, as an example, verse 101. It says, ask not questions. The Muslims, they say that people, they were asking Muhammad silly questions. Well, everything from Muhammad is silly question. Because you have no answer. Name for me one thing, Muhammad have answered for it. Even when the people, they ask him about the spirit, which is extremely important question. What Muhammad, he says, only hey, Allah It's from the command of my Lord. They are asking you, who is this spirit? You don't tell them from the command of my Lord. What is the answer? So Muhammad, because he knew he's a fraud. Look at this verse. Look at this stupid verse. Ask not about things which is made plain for you. Okay, well, so we ask about what? Because people, they ask questions about things is plain for them. Otherwise, they do not need to ask you. Do you see the stupidity? If we are not allowed to ask about things made plain for us, so we will ask about what? About things is not plain? If it's not plain for me, there's no reason for me to ask. And the verse 102 says, because for my generation, they are the same questions and they left the faith. Do you see it? So Jesus is the opposite. He wants you to read the books. He wants you to learn. Educate yourself. He don't want a fool follower. A fool, there's two kinds of fool, by the way. There's a fool by choice, which means he decided not to learn. And there's a fool who learned, but he decided to be a fool still. And I will explain that to you. You will see a guy supposed to have a PhD, and he's a Muslim. And then he want to believe, this is it, Zakir Naik is a doctor, right? Don't they say that Zakir Naik is a doctor? Okay. If we ask Zakir Naik, let me find Zakir Naik, hold on. We miss him. Don't you guys miss him? I was going to leave an hour ago. I hate you people. I know many of you now getting excited. We want to have fun. Zakir Naik is coming. Like, hey, Zakir Naik. What a joker. 
I mean, if this is their scholar, so who is the idiot? <clears throat> okay, let us see. Zakir Naik Quran M. Okay, look at this. Are you ready? <clears throat> this is the doctor talking. Okay, come on. All the data that you could find in the Quran, as well as the Hadith, dealing with embryology. And they followed the verse of the Quran, Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse 43, and Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 7, which says, First, Alu Ahal Zikri in Kuntum La Talamun. He just killed Muhammad. Is Alu Ahal Zikri in Kuntum La Talamun? So, ask the Christians and the Jews. The verse saying, ask the Christian and the Jews, if you do not know. <laughs> if you don't know, if you are in doubt, ask the person who is knowledgeable. So no, it doesn't say the person who is knowledgeable, you idiot. I read the the people who have a book. He don't even know how to translate his Quran. The Arab students, they collected the verses of the Quran and the Hadith dealing with embryology and translated into English and presented it to Prophet Keith Moore, that was about 30 years back. Yeah, well, this guy, he, he made himself, he made a book saying the Arab, they were great in science, except Islamic scientists. They were not good when it's come to embryology. And he quote the Quran, the same one, the same person, they keep quoting his name. And I gave you the link for him. Who have it? Do you admin have the link for this more, Dr. Moore? Post it. This guy, he himself, he made fun of the Quran. And the Muslim, they keep quote, quoting him. They invited him for a conference in Saudi Arabia. He got a big check. So he said, yeah, it says like something new. But in his book, this guy, he made fun of the Quran. So look, they want to explain to you the Quran have a miracle in biology. But if we go in the Quran, we will find the Quran saying the most stupid thing. that the dead blood became a baby and the sperm became the blood i hate my keyboard there's something wrong with it this is all right this is what he was talking about. This is this is this is Dr. Morbadar. Look at this. Look at this. This is science. Then we made the nutfa into a clot, a piece of thick conge uh, congealed blood. This is what science says. That a human being, sperm, the man, sperm, will become a dead blood, and then that the blood will grow. Any Muslim agree with this? Well, one of you, he sent me an email saying, can you refute their science? I said, my friend, I have two books talking about it. Go read them. One is called Quran and Science. The other one called Deception of Allah, because both of them, I, I decided to change the name. Actually, the, the, the two books are one book. The two books, because they became so big, you know, keep writing, keep writing. I said to myself, that I need to stop. Otherwise, it's endless. So I made them two books. Deception of Allah and Quran and science. Go and, and go and read and laugh. This is science. Do we have any Muslim when I say talk something about science? Because I'm really convinced the Quran is a book of science. Hmm?
Anyone? And Muhammad is the first one who come to a conclusion that if you have organs and first the baby will look a meal and will look like you. Hmm. And then the Muslim in their in translation, they say, oh, the Prophet was talking about the chromosome. Hmm. The Prophet was talking about the chromosome, but he's saying it is thick and white, talking about the sperm, what the chromosome. <laughs> and he says, the one who comes first, comes first. Suddenly, the one who comes first became a chromosome. Science. This is why if you look like me, you look so bad, I mean, and you are going to sleep with your wife, and you want to have a baby, well, don't have orgasm first, because then you will look like you. You don't want that to happen to your son, don't you? Do you? So let your wife have orgasm, so you, like choose a wife, she is good looking, and then never have orgasm first, never. Otherwise, your kids will look like you. Well, you don't want that. Unbelievable. Like, you know, if I get married, and I will say, no, you come first. She said, no, you come first. I said, no way, you come first. She said, you come first. I said, no, you don't understand. If I come first, the baby will look like me. I cannot do that. Stop, you are torturing me. Wisdom of the Prophet. Hmm. <sighs> Any Abdul? And by the way, one of the most amazing thing about uh, the sexual intercourse in Islam is when you go to the bedroom with your wife, you have to make a prayer. Like now, your wife, she is taking to talk off her clothes and she is wearing to his waiting for his majesty. She is excited. And now we start to say, You have to pray to Allah to protect your penis. Otherwise, Shaitan, he will round himself around your penis and he will be doing your wife with you. And then the son is not going to be your son or brother. That's science. I mean, who can deny that? Who can deny that? I can search for the, the statement in English. I don't know if somebody from the admins, they have it. About Shaitan round himself around the penis. I remember once, there was a, a Muslim, he came to a chat room in a program called Paltak. The one I use for... Uh, uh, for Muslims to call me now. So this guy, each time he come to the mic and he say, you Christians are sons of shaitan. Anyway, so once the admin, I was there, I just, I just, I used to sit, like I'm working my book and you know, I just, it's for fun. I'm listening. So the admin in the chat room, he said to me, can you just take the mic and say something to him? I said, say what? I don't know. I mean, this guy, he do the same. Each time he come, he say the same to us. I know you have, to, you are going to come with something. I don't know what it is, but you will make him not to say that forever. So I took the microphone. I said to him, so Abdul, are you saying that the one who is not a Muslim, Shaitan sleep with his wife and his sons will be sons of Shaitan? He said, yes. This is Hadith. The Prophet says so. And then I said to him, are you sure that this hadith is authentic? He said, yes, it's authentic. I said, are you sure it's authentic? He said, yes, I told you it's authentic. I said, again, third time, you have to say it three times like Muhammad. Are you sure it is authentic? He said, what's wrong with you? I told you already it's authentic. I said, well, based on what you are saying, then your prophet himself is a son of shaitan. Because you're a prophet. His father was not a Muslim. And his mother, she was not a Muslim too. So his father, when he had sex with his mother, shaitan, he round himself around the penis of Muhammad. 
You should see what happened to that guy. He started crying, literally. Oh, may Allah kill you. May Allah destroy you. You have a smart brain like the devil. Really? You idiot. You all you want to keep saying to us, we are sons of shaitan because we are not Muslims. And shaitan, he around himself around the penis of our father. You said that. And then when I said to him, well, this is mean your prophet himself. And look here how stupid Muhammad is. How you say to them such a thing? How Muhammad, he say even that to them? Don't he knew that Muhammad, for, Muhammad forgot that he himself, his father was a Muslim? Look, this is their book. The admin he post posted the, the the link for for this. You can open it and you can save it. Look what it says here. <clears throat> Narrated by Mujahid, if a man has intercourse and does not mention the name of Allah, look now you are holding excuse my language your private part, and now you have to mention the name of Allah. I mean there's a connection if you think about it. Okay. Is, is the text clear? Let me zoom more. Most of you are old like me and you don't have good vision. Except women for sure. They are all, all young here. You know, I'm just talking about men. Excuse me. Forgive me, please. Yeah. So uh, the fifth view is Mujahid. He said, if a man has intercourse uh, and he does not mention the name of Allah, the jinn, which means the shaitan, he warp himself around his penis and has intercourse along with him. That's so dangerous, man. And here you notice that the Prophet Muhammad is the first one who come with Mr. Kandam. Who is the one who come with Mr. Kandam? Prophet Muhammad. Take it or leave it. Right? I mean, we have to be honest here. Look at this. Look, let me take a selfie for it. Smile, Muhammad. We want to put you on the screen. Okay, thank you, Muhammad. Come on, Muhammad. Don't smile too much. Okay. Look at this. Isn't it, this is amazing knowledge? How Muhammad, who is not a doctor, he knew this. Let us face it together. I mean, I know you are Christian, you don't want to believe in Islam, etc. But how the Prophet, he was able to accomplish such a knowledge beyond our vision. Because you cannot see the, the, the shaitan rounding himself around your penis. So, shaitan is a condom. He is. I mean, it's, it's in front of you. He round himself around. So why people they have sexual diseases? If Shaitan always uh, is rounding himself, Shaitan should have the disease, not him, because he will go is rounding himself. Now, because we are not Muslims and we don't say this prayer, we have to find the solution. So what is the solution for this is, uh, is a problem now? So Shaitan don't round. I think you have to cover it by oil, so it's going to be slippery. So if Shaitan tried to hold himself on it, like he slipped, like zip, like, zip, like, 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 <laughs> Shaitan, you cannot, you cannot hold it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what genius, Muhammad? This is, this is, this is science. Just to show you another science of Muhammad, just. A little more, you know. You do not need too much science because too much science will kill you. You know, I'm. You, you know the thing. You know what I'm saying. You know the thing, huh? <clears throat> oh boy.
Wait, let's see. Where is the video of this guy? Each time I, I look for something, I find the I, I find my videos, not the video of the guy who I'm looking for. Ah, here we go. But this is not the whole video, it's a very short video. But this is a science too, I mean, we have to admit. Hadith of Tibidi says, it says, yeah, when you give the Adhan, the Shaitan, he not only runs, but the Hadith says, Lahu Durat. You know what Durat is? Durat is. <laughs> He runs, and as he's running, yeah, his fart comes out. Lahu <laughs> durat. I'm not making this a hadith. hadith. And listen to the hadith. Like you first, you know what the deen is about. The deen is about getting the shaitan away from you. So you know you go into the toilet. You know, Bismillahi Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubuthi wal khabai. Now you are going to execute my language. You are going to do literally shit. Literally, I'm, I say the word as it is. And now you have to say Allah. I mean, now you have to remember Allah. And now you have to pray to Allah. Why? What is the occasion? It's a shit time. Excuse my language. I know some people, they say you should not talk like this. I don't care what people say. Deliver it as it is. Not the shit, I mean, I mean the word. <laughs> no, no manure, no manure. So Allah protect me from these devils. You, you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get... Left foot, brother. Not the left foot. Don't enter with the right foot, brother. No, haram. Haram. Left foot, left foot, left foot. Left foot. Don't, don't enter with the right foot. Don't, please don't. Don't do it. Such a mistake is really serious and dangerous. Brother, what will happen if I enter with the right foot? Shaitan, he will put a screwdriver in your anus. I'm serious. He will go, he will play with it. You know, he play with it and you have to go to the bathroom like, you know, do it, you know, it's not coming. Even if you enter with the left foot, but you don't see the prayer. Like if, if one of them is missing, that's it. Shaitan, he got you. He got your anus. A reward for that. You're in the toilet. Shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith. Bismillahi Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubuthi wal Look, look, look. You say the prayer, Shaitan, he can't see you. Became invisible. I'm going to do that to rob rob a bank. I will say the same prayer and will go. Let me see if they will see me when I get inside the bank. I will go and take all the money and get out and nobody will see me like security, nobody like, you know, like even the camera, like there's nobody, you know, like uh, why? Because you said this is a prayer, you became invisible. Shaitan cannot see you, brother. This is, this is deep. You know what Durat is? Durat is... He runs and as he's running, yeah, his fart comes out. And do you hear the do you hear the, the the background music? This is like praying to Allah. I mean, look at the topic and look at the music in the background. I mean, it fit perfectly, perfect background with perfect topic. It's a shitty religion. What we can say? What is this background is about? What a Muslim? What are you doing? Lahu Durat. You know what Durat is? Durat is. He runs and as he's running, yeah, his fart comes out. Lahu <laughs> Durat. I'm not making this a hadith. And listen to the hadith like you first, you know what the deen is about. The deen is about getting the shaitan away from you. So you know you go into the toilet, you know, Bismillahi Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubuthi wal khabais. So Allah protect me from these devils. You you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. You're in the toilet, shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith, right? Guys, I have to go to the bathroom. I want to try something. Because honestly, like all of us, we have to say the truth. We suffer when we go. Because none of us say this prayer. None of us, we say this prayer. We have to be honest. Like, come on. How many of you suffer every day? All of you must be, you know. Hindus, Buddhas, atheists, all of you. You go to the bathroom, shaitan, he play with your hands. If we take a photocopy of your anus, only Allah knows what we will find there. Screwdriver, screws, maybe a spoon, a fork, a chair. I mean, whatever shaitan he used for his living room. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
He's like, you're first up. You know what the deen is about? The deen is about getting the shaitan away from you. So, you know, you go into the toilet. You know, Bismillahi Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubuthi wal khabais. So, Allah protect me from these devils. You, you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. You're in the toilet, shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith, right? It's a hadith. If you don't say the dua, what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tidmidhi says he plays with your bowels. Not only he is in the parking spot, which is your anus, he is playing now there. I mean, look at this, man. I'm going to convert to Islam immediately to secure my anus. Uh, oh boy. Let me give you the link so you guys can download it. Spread it around because I don't see those. This video is gone. I don't see it anywhere. So please download this video and share it around. We don't want it to die. You know, we don't want this community to disappear. We don't want this. This is a community, but this is serious. You see, I, I read the hate for you. You might not see it. I mean, there's two things will make it so funny. The guy singing it, and I'm making my comment. Because I notice that people, when they hear things or see things or read things, sometimes they don't notice how stupid it is. So I have to do my commentary ignition, you know? And then you will go to Kalesh. Because sometimes we don't notice how stupid and how silly. The Hadith says, the Hadith says, when he said the Hadith says, it's mean the Prophet said, not me, don't laugh. The Hadith says, the Hadith says, like it's not the donkey saying that is that a donkey the hadith says so don't put it on me put it in the prophet the prophet said take it serious so allah protect me from these devils you you go in there with your left foot the left foot you went in you get a reward for that you're in the toilet shaitan can't see you anymore that's in a hadith right if you don't say the dua what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tidmidhi says he plays with your bowels. He plays with your bowels. So you're inside there, you're thinking you're going to be out there in five minutes. He's taking you 20 minutes and you're still not halfway there. You know why? Because Uncle Shaitan is going, ooh, ooh, la la. And the Muslims are laughing, you believe it? They are laughing at the stupidity of their God. You are now sitting in the toilet seat. Okay, hold on. This is not enough for you guys. I think we need to have to do some work here. I mean, I don't think this is working. I think the explanation of this guy is not good enough for you. I don't know. I have a feeling that you are not understanding how serious the situation is. This is very serious. Imagine, brother, you are entering the bathroom, brother. I'm not going to say sister because this is really offending for women. Brother, you are entering the bathroom and you forgot to say the prayer. Let us go as I can neck. He is now in the school and now soon he will take a break from the school. His teacher, you know, he's a big teacher. He's teaching in Harvard, University of Pakistan, in Bangladesh, which is in Malaysia. Uh, see, he took a break now. Okay, now let me call him. Now we can call him because before that he is busy. You know, he's busy. He always answered in the third. Hello, Christian Prince. I can't talk to you. First, I was speaking for many hours. Secondly, you are stupid. Hey, second, like, hold on. You are the smart, and so we are calling you. Like, we have to admit. Thank you very much. I like it when you say you are the smart. Finally, you admit it. Okay, what is the question? Uh, uh, Zakir, you know, there's a hadith says that when you go in the bathroom, if you don't say a certain prayer, you have to enter with your left foot. And if you don't do that and make the prayer, Allahumma jannibna wa jannib shaitana marajaktana, shaitan, he will play with your anus. Is that true? Christian Prince, there is a scientist. His name is the Panese name. It's very hard for you to pronounce, but I'm going to help you. His name is Satuki Honda Satuki Honda Toyota. It's very well known. 
I'm mean, the one who did cover death. But if you enter the bathroom and you don't do the flat, did that you will be a I reckon I, I think the last part was an old I'm not sure really what you say. I'm saying the third death, his name is Honda Suzuki, uh, Isaac and Ike. You said first Suzuki Honda. Now his name became Honda Suzuki. Great sympathy. It doesn't matter. Because simply the Japanese last name and first name always are mixed. And uh, it depends how you flip him. So Mr. Suzuki Honda Toyota, he said that if you go in the bathroom and you don't get the prayer, Satan, he play with your uh, enos. Okay, well, but what is the proof? I'm going to play to you. He installed a very high sensitive cameras. He installed where? What? Cameras? Exactly. And they make that interfering. What? 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 Interfering. I oh, mean, like, like x ray and. Exactly. By the way, I know that after watching my video, your knowledge is increasing. And even your English is improving. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like I'm going to cry now. No problem. No problem. Keep watching. And then he put the camera. And he put somebody, he entered a bathroom. He brought one Muslim and one he's not a Muslim. And he noticed that the one who is not Muslim, his anus is having suffering from some kind of explosion and some kind of irritation. Some what? Irritation. Oh, irritation. Uh, what do you think causing the irritation? It's a it's breath. It's Satan. Satan is playing with his anus. And the Muslim, his anus was 100% cool and happy. While the non believer brother was his anus suffering. And he was so much in pain. And actually, we know that after some time, that the blood is coming. Blood? Exactly. Uh, Zach and Ike, have you ever suffered from such a thing? Christian Prince, be yourself. I always say the prayer and by the Lord, Alhamdulillah, Allah, he broke my anus. Okay, well, I don't know, Zach and Ike. I go to the bathroom, fine. Nothing happening. Christian Prince, you think it's not happening, but the fact it's happening. If we get you those cameras, I assure you that you will see the difference. Oh, so there's a, only the camera, but the, the, the hadith says he push it up and he go inside and you stay there forever. Oh, what I know, right? Prince. To be or not to be is the question. And this is a statement said by a Muslim. His name is Sheikh Esper. What? To be or not to be is the question. Okay. And this is a statement made by a Muslim Sheikh. His name is Sheikh Esper. His name is Sheikh Esper. Shakespeare, you mean? He was a Muslim? Exactly. And he is one of those who witnessed for the scenario. Because his wife, he was a Muslim. And he was a Muslim. When his wife took to the bathroom, he stayed there for 10 hours. And he was upset from her. That's why he divorced her. And then he married a second woman. And then he divorced her. And then he married a third woman. And then he divorced her. And he married a fourth woman. And then he divorced her. Okay, Zach and I stop. Come on. Are you going to continue? I'm going to tell you something. So we ask him, why you are before the woman? Because he said they are not praying for Allah when they go to the bathroom. And he started to go to the bathroom, they stay there for 10 hours. And I can't take it anymore. Because at that time, Shakespeare was a poor person, and he was the only one bathroom in the house. Oh. So why you don't go first before they go? Christian Prince, it's very impossible to talk to you. Why must you go in the bathroom to take your Why are you doing first? You cannot control it. Okay. I mean, you got the point there. If she is staying there for 10 hours doing poo poo. Exactly. I mean, 10 hours. Not 16 hours. Christian Prince, I think you're making fun of me. And you know, you are fully on your debit. And this is proven scientifically. And uh, thank you very much for calling me and don't call me again. Uh, thank you. Bye bye. Genius. I mean, who can deny this religion? You cannot. And then they make videos for you about Quran and science. And the prophet, the prophet of science. And now you are inside the bathroom and shaitan is inside your anus. He plays with the bowels. So you're inside there, you're thinking you're going to be out there in five minutes. He's taking you 20 minutes and you're still not halfway there. You know why? Because Uncle Shaitan is going, ooh, ooh, la la. 
See, the hadith told you, the hadith says to us, he plays with your bowels. Yalla abu, yalla abu, he plays with your bowels. That's hadith it? of Tirmidhi shed, it says. Shed, did he say shed? Hadith of Tirmidhi shed? <laughs> shed. <laughs> Anyway, what a shitty topic. I want to say, guys, thank you very much for being here. I think it's time for me to go. I hope we have a good time together. Remember, we are not here just, you know, I mean, we, yes, we have a good time, we laugh, but this is a very serious topic, and they are trying to deceive your children. They are spending a lot of money in Europe, in Australia, in Canada, in USA, billions, not millions, in order to deceive your children. So you have a duty, serious duty, a church should start at home, not at school, and not at church. For many who they are in the churches who claim to be priests are deceivers and they are politically correct. Many of them don't even dare to say that Islam is of the devil. And if somebody says that, they will make him the devil himself. Fighting the devil is not easy. I do my part. Do you do your own? Protect your family, teach them, educate them, so you will not have one of your family to be a victim. One of your children go to school and they fool him. Teach them, educate them, and don't want them to be exposed to lies without being protected with the truth. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. Pray for the Muslims. We love them. We don't hate them. But Islam for sure is nothing but a fraud, a scam, an evil religion. The Lord, he said, from their fruit, you shall know them. And Muhammad is a fruit, is a fruit, is more than proof of how evil Islam is. God bless and see you soon again. God bless you. Take care.